Today we are going to implement a daily challenge kind of feature. Hi everybody, welcome to Lazy Devs. I'm Christian, I'm still in China. Hmm. And China is treating me well, thank you so much. So, uh, today we are going to do a um, daily challenge kind of feature. Now, I will make this video part of the uh, roguelike tutorial. I will add it to the playlist of the roguelike tutorial because at the end of the video, we're gonna jump into roguelike, um, pork-like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And we're gonna actually implement some of the learnings that we uh, that we gathered. We're gonna impl implement that into um, pork-like, but it's uh, this episode is gonna be like a standalone tutorial episode um, to explain you generally how um, these kind of features work, how uh, daily challenges would work. So what is a daily challenge? You might be familiar with um, daily challenges from roguelikes or like rogue lights, um, such as um, Spelunky, as I think is a very famous one. Uh, and also I think um, Binding of Isaac has one too. And the idea is that um, when you launch the game, there's gonna be like your regular, you know, start a new game, but there's also gonna be a daily challenge option. And that daily challenge is gives you a random dungeon, uh, a random game that is gonna be the same for everybody on that same day around the world. So everybody can play the same map, so to speak, even though the maps are procedural, procedural generated. And that's kind of weird, right? Um, and then the idea is that you only have one try to do this map, so uh, you cannot like replay it and learn it, um, you know, learn it by heart. But you only have one go. But everybody has the same map, so you can like, for example, record it and compare um, with other people, or you can like, you know, compare scores and so forth. I think this is a really cool feature for roguelikes. Um, and yeah, it's maybe actually something to think about. You know, where if you can implement this kind of feature, what kind of game you want to implement this feature in. Obviously, it has to be something where random number generation has a important role in how the game plays out. But I think some games lend themselves better to like a, a daily challenge feature than others. If you think some about something like, obviously, roguelikes are very, very uh, good goals for daily challenge kind of things, because it's like the random number generation generates a level. And it's kind of nice if you can like try the same level um, as your friends. But for example, if you could also implement a daily challenge in something like Tetris, and I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Like it doesn't seem, doesn't seem like like it's, if the pieces that are falling down are kind of predetermined. That doesn't that kind of feels odd. And that's something that we're gonna talk about at the end of the episode. So maybe before we get into uh, num random number generation, we have to uh, talk a little bit about how random number generation works. Uh, I always thought that there would be like, the computers would have like some kind of chip inside them that would generate noise. Like there would be maybe some static or something and then that's how they would generate random numbers. But actually it's a mathematical process where you take a starting number, a seed, and that seed is turned into a completely different number through very complicated mathematics that are very unpredictable, that generate like very like fractal kind of stuff, you know, that generates very unpredictable results from similar outputs. Uh, you know, like the butterfly effect. Small changes result in huge differences on the output. You will, uh, you will seed the random number generation with some kind of um, number that changes constantly, for example, today's date or the time, and that will generate completely unpredictable numbers. Uh, and the idea is you will get more random numbers if you feed back the results of the previous calculation back into the next calculation. So you will continue creating very unpredictable numbers. All of this is kind of can be repeated, and a lot of people who like do like speedruns uh, manipulate random number generation in games to, to predict predictable results. So it's not actually random. It's actually uh, you can actually uh, repeat it. Um, but because we seed it with, uh, with some arbitrary number that we get from, from the computer, uh, we, um, it seems for most cases, for, for most uh, applications, it seems like it's completely random. Where, in, in fact, it's not. And Pico 8 gives us the ability to manipulate this seed, this initial seed. Let's take a look at how this works. 
All right, so this is how um, my program that I wrote here. It basically it generates like a number of random numbers from one to six. So it basically like rolls the dice uh, seven times. And the little spark line is kind of like just like a visual representation of the different numbers. You know, four is, is kind of middle, two is very low, five is higher than four, three is down, like it's great, creates a landscape. And you can see every time I run this program, I will get a completely different landscape, completely different new sets of numbers. And so here's how this works. Everything, basically most of the time, uh, stuff happens in the init function. We clear the screen, um, we generate a number with this new function that I have here that is called dice. Down here is the function. It just returns, you know, floor um, of a random number and multiply by six plus one. Just to um, reiterate, R and D, the function that generates random numbers, always generates a number between zero and one, but not actually one. Um, so it's kind of zero point something. Um, and so if you multiply this by six, we will get, you know, something between zero and six, but not actually six, so five point something in, you know, the highest uh, and zero point something in the lowest. Um, we add one to this and then we we'll remove everything behind the comma and that will get us a number between one and six. Um, so yeah, we put this number into this variable num. We have like an encounter here. We set a color and set, um, create a line of zero length because we are using this new function of, that was implemented in a recent uh, Pico version where if you uh, execute line, the function uh, line, with just two parameters, it will continue drawing the last line. So uh, I draw a first line as a starting point for our, for our spark. And then uh, I just do it, you know, eight times or seven times, actually. Um, I just go through this process where I write down uh, the last number. I draw the line, the spark line to the height of the number. And then I generate a new random number and just repeat it a couple of times. Uh, and then I set, and this might be something that we haven't discussed, cursor is an ability to set the text cursor at some position. Um, because I also want to and that's something that comes down here. I would, if I press a button, I want to print more numbers. So it's like, this is the thing. And then when I press a number, I will just get a sequence of more numbers just in case so I can see how the sequence of random numbers continues. And again, you know, it's always a different spark. It's always different sequence numbers. All of this is just like visualization for the random number generator. So we kind of like have an idea. I uh, just like to to, uh, to reiterate, I constricted everything to like a dice from one to six, because I think this may be more intuitive than, you know, zero point something, something, something. That's kind of very like, okay, I have no idea what's happening there. Good. So I want to introduce you now to this idea of uh, manipulating the seed of the random number. So what we want to do, oh, this is an interesting, interesting random number sequence, like just a couple of ones, right? Um, so what I want to do is like every time I start this program, I want to have the same sequence of random numbers. And um, the way we do this is with this function srand. I'm going to go srand and we're going to plug it with zero. Now, do we get this sequence numbers 43334? And if we rerun this, it will be the same sequence. You see, because we seeded the random number generation with a certain number, and that results in a random sequence of numbers, but one that is, if you repeat it, it will be the same. And of course, if we continue making more numbers, 451, then we get the same continuation. So this sequence continues at infinitum. Uh, we can create a huge, very long sequence of numbers that are always going to be the same because we seeded them with the same seed. And if we choose different seeds, we get different sequence of numbers. So srand1 will get us this sequence here. And again, this is going to be the same sequence every time if I restart this program. And uh, again, this sequence of numbers here is going to be the same sequence every time. And of course, if we um, we can also always plug in also different things. For example, we can plug in comma numbers, so it's like 23.6 or something. If we run this, then also we're gonna get a different seed, and also we can uh, seed it with um, text. Actually, if you seed it with text, this might be the same as seeding with zero, right? Yeah, I think it is. Um, and the reason for this is because um, text, um, like if you have some text and if you change this into a number, that number will be zero. If the text contains an actual number, something like four or five, then we get a we should get a different sequence. 
yeah, and just slightly different sequence. So 606 or something will get us this sequence. Um, because if the text contains a number, then uh, Lua is able to translate that text into an actual number. So, uh, you know, 606 will turn into the number 606. But if you have a text like text, that turns into zero because the Lua cannot make sense of it. It cannot actually translate this into a number. Just as an idea here. Okay, so we got this going. Everything's fine. Everything's peachy. That's how we could start doing a, a daily challenge. The idea with a daily challenge, obviously, is now is to seed the random number generator with today's date. So, today, for example, today is the 22nd of October, uh, and um, we seed it with you know 20, 22 10 2019. And so if you run it today, we're going to get this seed. And if you run a different um, date, we're going to get a different seed. That's the idea. Um, how are we going to access today's date? Well, um, Pico8 has some function for this as well. So uh, we have stat92. That's going to be the day. Stat91. That's going to be the month. And stat 90, that's going to be the year. Stat is a function that allows us to access different information about what the program is doing. I think we we did stat uh, some, in some tutorial before. We can, for example, chain, uh, look into what URL is Pico8 run on if it's exported as a, as a website. There's all sorts of very useful things. I, can, I think you can access the mouse that way and there are all sorts of other things. Nine, uh, 92, 91 and 90 gives us the current date. I think there's even like a hour thing. So you can do an hourly challenge if you want. So what we can do is we can just plug, for example, this one here, stat 92. We can plug it into, into the random generation and that gives us kind of like a daily challenge, but it's going to be the same every month. So on the first of every month, it's going to be this, the the same challenge as on the first of the uh, first of the next month and so forth. So that's not exactly what we're looking for, but we're kind of like getting there. Something I would do here is I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to go seed is equal stat 92. And I'm going to go srn seed. And then I'm going to um, cursor Five, five. I'm going to set the cursor at this coordinates and I'm going to print. Um, I'm going to also set the color to 13. And I'm going to print the seed just so we know what seed we're seeded with. So now this is the seed 22 and this is how the seed 22 looks like. And then, you know, we could seed it and we could do a yearly challenge. So for an entire year, you know, you will get a certain uh, a certain uh, level and it will change then afterwards. So you can go like stat 90 and that's going to be 2019, you know, and uh, that's going to be the um, that's going to be the yearly challenge. And of course, you know, just to, to show it like this is the October, this is October. It's October, the 10th month, and so um, you will get 10 from if you seed it with this value. Okay, but how are we going to get at um, uh, a seed that kind of like works with all of our, with, with the entire date? Well, we can combine them, for example. We could say something like 92 dot dot uh, stat 91 dot dot stat 90. That's a good, good solution, right? So the dot dot changes the results of the stat into a text and we just gonna create like a bit big text that is kind of like really just our date. So the day, month and year. So it will look like this 22, 10, 2019. And we're gonna seed it with the, with this text and we're gonna always get the same result. Let's let's check something. Four three three four one six two. Huh. If we seed it with a text, we will get the same results, 4334162. What if it changed to seed 0? Ah. You see something broke here. It seems like we seeded it with this big number. We had like this huge text, right? Uh, 
and we changed it to a number. We want to change it to a number, but actually it didn't work. Uh, it changed it into a, a number zero. It seeded with, with number zero. This seed that we have here, this seed here, is the same here as seed zero. Something wor didn't work. Um, what happened here, Lua wasn't able to change this text, this string, wasn't able to change it to the number. Why? It's a perfectly reasonable number. It's a very long number, and, uh, admittedly, but it's, you know, it's, it's fine. The problem is that uh, Pico 8 is working with very constrained variable sizes. So uh, each uh, number can be of a maximum certain size. And that size is 32,000. That's not a lot. <laughs> so once a number becomes gets bigger than 32,000, it, um, it kind of loop, loops through and becomes minus 32,000. And um, so uh, Lua or Pico 8 cannot change this big of a number into a number and so it gives up and it returns zero instead. Um, it, this works, you will see this will work if we uh, if make the number smaller, for example, something like this. See, now it's 20 to 10 and that's something that Lua can handle. 20 to 10 can be transformed into a number and so Lua creates a a number here and seeds our number random number generation with uh, with that number. So somehow we need to find a way of taking today's date and making it fit, fit into 32,000. You would think that 32,000 is enough numbers to deal with to um, to uh, express today's date somehow. So I'm gonna do this very slowly and this is not gonna be token uh, efficient, but it will work. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do like go like this. I'm gonna create uh, three variables for for day, uh, month, year. Just so but because I think stat ninety two ninety one is a bit confusing, and I think it might be easier if we know exactly what you're working with. And again, later on you can like take this code and optimize it for tokens. That's fine. All right, so we have these, and so we're gonna start like this. Seed equals um, stat 92, uh, no, wait a minute, day. So first we're gonna say to start, say start with a day. Then we're gonna go seed plus equals month plus uh, multiplied by 31. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of like trying to count which day of the year we're talking about. Uh, and we're gonna assume, like we're just gonna do it roughly, we're gonna assume that each month has 31 days. Some months have less, but adding this math into this wouldn't actually win us anything. So um, we actually probably should do like a minus one here. So, you know, the first month is gonna be a zero month. And on the second month, we start, you know, with 34, 31 and add the day on top of that. But you know, that's... You don't have to do that in the US as well. It's just, it's fine. It's fine. It will be fine. And then we're gonna go seed plus equals uh, year multiplied by three seven two. Three seven two is twelve times uh, thirty one. So kind of like how many year, uh, days a year would have if each month was. Uh, was 31 days. I think that I I'm, I'm, I'm just, just just want to make sure that I'm not lying here. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not lying here. It's fine. Okay. So, um so yeah, we're basically kind of like calculating which <laughs> which day it is since the birth of Jesus. <laughs> because, you know, at the end we're going to go 2019 times 372. Now, we don't need to do that because we know that our game will be released in 2019 because we cannot go back to time. So we can go here year minus 2019. So it's going to be kind of like uh, the day since the game was released, so to speak, since the first day of the year at which the game was released. Okay, so it's like 332. And if I run this again, uh, it will be 32. Tomorrow is going to be 333 and so forth. So, for example, if day is going to be plus one, you're going to be 333. And if month is going to be one one, it's going to be get you know by 30 more and so forth. Great. There is a bit of an issue here, and that you know sometime in the future, this year 
thing will make it overflow and I think it's like I don't know it's like plus 100 and 100 years yeah you see it becomes negative so it will flip signs at some point in 100 years the game will will stop working what about 50 years 50 years you'll be fine in 60 years you'll be fine in 70 years you'll be fine in 80 years 80 years is still okay in 90 years that's where it's kind of like becomes bigger than 32,000 something and it becomes negative and it still works because it's you know number is just negative mm, but you will see and we're going to get some problems down the line but whatever so far it works uh, just for the next 100 years uh, 80 years or so this will be a very very fine way of uh, calculating a daily challenge seed now, before we get into more complicated stuff, there's something I also want to address, which is something that actually I was struggling with a little bit. What if you want to have random numbers back? What if somebody picks the daily challenge in the menu, and then they play the daily challenge, and the daily challenge is over, and then they just want to continue playing the normal game? You want to reseed the random number generator with a random number. Well, so right now it's not possible, right? We get like the seed, and then we're getting the sequence number 155. So how do I get the pink numbers to be random again, right? That's my question. How can I reseed the, the, the random number generation? There's a cool trick that I saw. And that is gonna be, uh, we're gonna get, go, we're gonna create a new variable at the beginning of the program. Before we change the seed, we're gonna go, we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna put a random number in that variable. Because at the beginning of the program, when Pico 8 launches, it, it, it's, it automatically seeds the random number generator with you know, the current date and time and you know, seconds since 2000, uh, 1970, like the Unix number. Is, uh, look it up. So it takes like the, the current, that kind of second number, that kind of crazy date number, and plugs it into a random number generator. So every time Pico launches, it, cre it creates different random numbers. We're going to uh, exploit that by creating a random number and putting it into a variable. And then, after we generated our seed here, we can go srand rand. We're going to plug this random number into our, our as a seed into our random number generator. And now, we're still starting with the same uh, seed, but now the pink numbers are different every time. We are successfully reseeded the random number generator. Uh, so if you want to do it multiple times, it's important to up update the rent variable so it always has a fresh random seed so after maybe after you restore the rent variable after you reseed the random number generator with rent it would be a good idea to do like a s rent equals r and d here like to create a new random seed just so you're not reseeding to the same number over and over again and i just realized this is getting really confusing and so if you have any questions let me know because whew, and talking of random numbers has a way of really like blowing your minds a little bit. All right, so now we know how to generate a, like a simple seed from the current date, plug it into the random number generator, how to make it random again afterwards. Actually, I'm going to keep this around. So now uh, we're going to go to the second part of the daily challenge thing where it's like, how do I make sure that people can play the random challenge only once per day. Like if they try it once, then they cannot play it again. Well, we are going to use, obviously for that, we're going to use the C data thing, the card data. Um, so you might be this familiar from different tutorials. We can um, save a save file on the computer, on the current computer. I'm going to save the last seed that we used for the random number generator. So car data test, or let's call it R&D test. This is how we initialize our save file. And then we, after we generate the seed, actually, no, we're going to go um, old seed. That's going to be the seed that was played before. Uh, we're going to go um, D get, right? And we're gonna save it in, in slot one, zero. We're gonna save, save the old seed in slot zero. Now, at, at the beginning, when we run the program for the first time, old seed is gonna be zero, because we every every slot in our save file has um, has zero saved into it. Um, here, we uh, when we draw the seed on the screen, uh, where are we doing this? Uh, print seed. 
this seed print alt seed. Like this. So old seed is zero, new seed is three, three, two. That's good, everything is good. And now we can, for example, with a press of a button here down in update function, we're gonna do if button five is pressed, then I want to print played the challenge. This is what happens when somebody picks the challenge. And in this um, moment, we're gonna do D set uh, in slot zero. Oh, no, wait, how does it work again? Uh, ah, there we go. D set zero seed. We're gonna uh, put the current seed into slot zero, save it uh, as a reminder that the challenge has been tried, that this seed has been already played by the player. So um, here we are, uh, the old seed is set to zero. We're gonna play it, play the challenge. And now if you restart the program, you will see that the program remembered that the old seed was 3321, that we already played 3321. So all that is left to do now is to basically be like, um, if old seed is equals, or I mean, could be also greater than seed, then uh, can't play challenge. I'm going to put it into color eight because that's red. Mm, there's some problem here. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that, this way around. So we check the seat, if there was a seat that was played that is either the same as today's seat or you know, some, sometime in the future because somebody manipulated something. Uh, we're gonna see if this seat was already played and if it was already played, the today's seat was already played, we kind of like lock the challenge. So we kind of kind of of course, we didn't lock anything, but we can like we detected that we cannot play today's challenge anymore because it has been already played. And you can see that this works like it's on the next day. So I'm gonna advance the day by one. You will see, ah, okay, it's a new day. Now I can play the game again. And I can play the game now. I play the challenge now, run it again, and now I cannot play the challenge anymore. So this is the general idea. You generate a seed from today's date, and um, you write it in your save data whenever you play it. And you see, look, always look in the save data if, to, if today's seed was already played. If it was already played, then you lock the player out from that feature so they cannot play it anymore. And of course, the player can delete the save file and can manipulate the date uh, of the computer. That's all possible. But I mean, if people want to cheat, they will cheat. They can just open the, the your Pico 8 file and manipulate that if they want to. So, you know, don't, no, no reason to get upset about that. There's one more thing I wanted to discuss, and that is this part here, the old seed greater than seed. This will cause one trouble here where in 80 years, it will lock, lock the players out of the game altogether. So we're gonna add 80 to, to this, 90. So now this seed is negative 30,000 and old seed is still 333 and now you can never play a new challenge anymore. It kind of like because the sign of the seed has flipped because the sign is now negative, the number that comes out is negative because we are over 32,000, whatever. Um, we, uh, the new seed will always be smaller than the seed that's saved in the save file. And now we cannot play the, the daily challenge anymore. That's bad. How do we deal with this? Well, um, a good idea is, I mean, we're using integer numbers right now. But the way Pico 8 is set up is like, yeah, the, the range is minus 32 to positive 32. Like that's the range that we can work with in a variable. But we can also use comma numbers and we aren't actually exploiting that here. So what we can do here is we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna manipulate the way we generate the seed from the current date to, uh, to allow us a greater range of dates to be stored in a number. And we can do something like, Gonna go here. Oh yeah, no, that's the day here. We're gonna go here. Go here. Day times 0 0.1, month times 0 0.1, and 
and year times 0 0.1. We just kind of like, you know, uh, shift the entire date, or, or the entire seed or in, into the one digit, into the comma values. Uh, it's still not working here um, because um, because of how the calculations work, because we first multiply by 300 and then multiply by 0, 1, and so the variable overflows and then it, it gets smaller. So something we can do here is can we can reduce this a little bit. We can go here because multiply twi we can multiply twice, so we can multiply just once and any time. So now this is how we're going to get here. So if you simplify the, these calculations, this will actually work and it will, won't cause an overflow. And so now we get a smaller seed out of our date. Uh, don't get confused about the fact that we have like four numbers behind the digit. Um, that's because of um, rounding errors that are very complicated to explain. Don't worry, it will be fine. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this allowed us to compress the current date into a smaller number that won't cause an overflow. And so now I think it will take quite a lot of t lot of time like you know 900 years or so until until the next overflow appears you can still you know go even smaller and go zero zero one if you want your game to be playable for 900 years but you know i think at some point you have to be rational about this and be like mm, i don't think this is something we have to worry about i can still go back <laughs> and, t and, and, pay and tweak this game in 900 years <laughs> and fix this bug um okay yeah, that's 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 correct. So yeah, this is basically how I calculate the seed from the date. And again, this is not very token efficient, and we can change it to um, to be more token efficient if, in if, in the future. Uh, but I kind of like spelled it out this way so you guys understand what is happening. Let's try to implement this into an actual setting to see kind of like what the problems arise. All right, so I've put now uh, this this principle, this random number generation, I put this into the um, roguelike, uh, pork-like. I removed a bunch of parts just so we can see, you know, what kind of levels are generated here. Basically, at the beginning of the game, I um, create, use the same function to create a... Um, I'm, I'm debugging the current day and so date, and then I create a daily seed here using the same function that we had before, but now everything is one line, so I'm, I'm a little bit more token efficient. And then here um, I'm print printing the daily code, the daily seed into a debug function, and then I'm set seeding the entire random number generator using this daily code. And so you can see, you know, it, I changed a little bit here. I, I'm using yesterday's code because that's actually a really nice level here, as you can see. And that can demonstrate some some ideas here. But okay, so now you can see, like every time we run this, we're gonna get the same. We're gonna get the same level here and if I remove this srand function we're gonna get different levels. See now we get different levels every time. And again if we for example we change the day we're gonna go minus two here then we get different levels. So now we get like one specific level for every day. Okay, so uh, if you implement this you will immediately see some problems. For example you will see that there's a chest here. I will open this chest. It's a butter knife. I will restart the game, it's still a butter knife. Restarting the game, a butter knife. Restarting the game, butter knife. If it always be a butter knife in here. And that kind of makes sense, and that's to some extent it's something that we want, right? We want the level to be predictable. We want the drops, the item drops to be the same every time. Uh, what we're doing here in this game, you have to remember, is that when the moment when we open the chest, we use the random number generator to determine what's inside the chest. The chest is not something that's generated, like the contents of the chest. It's not something that's generated when we generate the level. It's something that's generated on the fly while we are opening chests. And so the same thing about the, the, the jars down there. If I smash the jars, whatever comes out of the jar is something that I determine in the moment when I smash the jar. That's all fine and dandy. But imagine what if this chest wasn't a chest but a opponent. I'm not generating any opponents here on any uh, enemies. But if it was a monster and I was attacking it and I would do it some damage and that damage was determined by a random number, what would happen in this game then would be that all of my attacks would be also predetermined by the seed. So all of my hits would be predetermined by the seed. So if I replayed this, for some reason replayed this level, I would get the same attacks. So for example, a critical attack 
would always occur on my first attack and then I critical miss and then attack again and hit again and so forth. And the same thing about the hits that I receive from enemies. They would also follow a sequence that's predetermined by the seed of the random number generator. And again, that's, I don't know how about you, but it kind of like feels odd. Like imagine playing a dice game where all of the dice throws are actually predetermined. It kind of feels odd. It's kind of like there's some something about this kind of predetermined random number generation that is as at odds with the way we think about certain ways in which randomness determines what happens in a game. And you could get into weird situations where you can start gaming the system, you know, where it's like you, if you know that the next hit is going to be a miss, you will let the enemy hit you. So the enemy misses you and then you will get the next attack or you will attack something else that is, doesn't matter if you hit it or not, just so you get the next number in a sequence that is going to be more favorable. And that's something I had with the games like um, uh, Jagged Alliance, which saved the seed, the current random seed, in the save file so you couldn't save scum. So if you reloaded the game and tried again, you will get the same sequence of random numbers. But then that didn't really help because if you were aware of that, you could then behave differently. So those numbers would play out differently. So you'd shoot an enemy and miss reload and then, you know, would shoot something else and then shoot that enemy again. So you would then hit. So it's, it's, it's a bit weird here and you have to like really consider yourself, uh, you think about yourself, how you want to implement this seed number generation in your game. And there is another problem that, that still occurs here. So uh, let me show. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna go to the next level. And this looks like this, you know, you see like we're starting in the uh, top left corner and in the top right corner is like this big area, okay? So now I'm gonna do this again, restart the game, go through this level. Completely different level. It doesn't look like the level before. So we kind of broke this uh, this daily challenge seed. We're kind of like getting a different sequence of levels now, just because, why, 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 right? Why did that happen? Well, because I smashed a pot. And if I smash the pot, that will start the random number generator, that will generate a number to determine what's inside the pot. And now the generation of the next level, of the next floor, will be completely different because it will follow a different sequence of numbers because, you know, we used one of the numbers that would follow for the pot. So depending on how I'll behave throughout the level, it will change the way the next level will look like. So in order to avoid that, you will actually have to, like if you say you're going to have eight floors, something you have to do at, you have to do at the beginning of the game is when you generate the JD challenge um, dungeon, you will have to generate the seeds for or eight floors first, and then let the player play the game. And then every time they ascend the stairs, you reseed the number generator with those pre-generated seeds. So we would have to like have an array of seeds for different floors and reset the random number generator at every time the player ascends the floor. So you will see implementing this kind of stuff can be quite challenging and and you get into nitty gritty. I'm not gonna get uh, um, show you how those things are being done because again, this becomes like very very uh, granular, very atomic, and we have start to you know discuss edge cases, and we gonna you know, get very quickly in game design. What do we want to be affected by the daily seed? What's something that's gonna happen uh, organically and so forth? But hopefully at this point, I give you all the tools that you need in order to implement your own daily challenge functions. So again, if you have any questions if you have any suggestions, if you have any better ideas of how to implement these kind of daily seeds, let me know. Uh, I'm still working on my version of the day of their uh, pork like, so hopefully it will come sometime in the future. Uh, yeah, guys, see you next time around. Bye bye.